In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Have you ever said something like this? That person has done it again. That person has done something that I don't like. And we can imagine some things that we might say that about. Maybe uh, as a younger person, you notice that someone else, maybe in your class at school, has been printing things on the internet, uh, lies about you. And you see this, and you say, he or she has done this again. So what am I going to do? If I know how to do it, maybe I would go on the internet and say things about that person. Get back at that person for what that person has done. Or a neighbor, perhaps, is a person that you don't really like all that well, and you might have many reasons to distrust, borrows your lawnmower without asking. Mows the lawn, comes back, brings the lawnmower back, no gas left, and uh, the uh, blade kind of chipped up from hitting rocks. How do you respond? Can he ever be forgiven? Do you hold a grudge? We face challenges like that, probably uh, weekly in our lives. Well, uh, in today's gospel, today's gospel follows uh, the one last Sunday, which ended with Jesus telling his disciples or teaching his disciples and us about if someone who sins against you. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and that person alone. And if that person, you know, confesses and repents, seeks uh, your forgiveness, you rejoice. If that doesn't happen, take one or two people with you and confront the person again with the hope that that person will again confess his wrong, repent, and seek your friendship. Step three is if that person refuses even that, you take him to the church and the whole church uh, confronts that person with the hope that there is repentance, with the hope that that person is brought back from doing whatever wrong or sin he or she has committed. Did the teaching of Jesus about dealing with a person who sins against you prompt Peter to ask the question in today's gospel. It's very possible that uh, Jesus continues with with the parable we heard today because Peter asked that question. And it probably happened right away because the gospel begins with the word then. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? And Peter immediately suggests a a number. Should I forgive him seven times? And Peter probably thought, well, I'll get get a compliment for that, because the the Jewish tradition uh, commanded that we forgive three times person who sins against you in the same way, you forgive that person three times. And Peter probably expected to be complimented by Jesus for saying seven times. We're not told how Peter reacted to Jesus' answer, because Jesus said, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. An alternate translation uh, to Jesus' answer is 70 times 7, which would have been 490 times. Whether we're talking about 77 or 490 uh, times of forgiving someone, uh, both of them are beyond our capability, probably, or our desire. And then Jesus immediately spoke the parable of the unmerciful servant. Scene one, there are 
I'll describe th three scenes in this parable. Scene one, therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. This is an unbelievable debt. A day laborer making the contemporary wage of a denarius a day would have to work 60 million days to pay off that debt. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. And even if that were possible, that payment would not even begin to make a dent in that huge debt. So the servant fell at, on his knees, imploring his master, the king, have patience with me, I will pay you everything. Well, the king knew that that would ever, never happen. This promise could never be fulfilled. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. Well, then scene two, this same servant goes out. He finds a fellow servant that owes him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the neck, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. His fellow servant fell down on his knees and pleaded, using the same words which this servant had used when the king asked him to pay. He said, have patience with me and I will pay you. Well, it would have been possible to pay the debt of a hundred denarii, possibly within six months of working. But this self-servant uh, refused and went and put him into prison. Well, then send through, sign, uh, uh, scene three, when his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported their, to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. That would probably be a lifetime in prison. It's completely incomprehensible that that person had, who had received such grace and mercy from his master could be so ungracious to a fellow servant who owed him one six hundred thousandth of the debt that he had or owed previously to the king. But this certainly is a real picture of the refusal of many people, then and today, to forgive those who sin against them. Jesus' concluding words in today's gospel, as he applies this parable to his disciples and to us today, he says, So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Knowing the forgiveness that Jesus has for us and then failing to forgive uh, another person, whether that person is a brother or sister Christian or someone else who is outside the Christian family, it makes no difference in the this, this sense that uh, refusing to forgive really negates the forgiveness that Jesus has for us. He went to the cross for us. He gave his life for us. And knowing his grace and mercy, we must be moved to forgive those who sin against us. It's possible, impossible for us to count the number of all our sins. Some of our sins are very obvious, and we know them well. We can't forget them. 
Many of our sins we don't even know, we not even realize. But our all-knowing Lord does know them. And Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for every one of those sins. Not just the bad ones, not just the sins we know about and often continue to do. When Jesus spoke from the cross saying, it is finished, he was saying that his sacrifice of suffering and death for us paid for every single sin that we ever have committed or ever will. And every single sin of every person who ever lived and ever will live. And your Lord wants you to know and continually remember and firmly believe that this is his great gift of forgiveness to you. And the, the compassion in this parable, the compassion of the king to that first servant who owed him such a huge debt is to be, remind us of the great compassion of our Lord Jesus who died on the cross to pay for sins that we commit, which we can't even count. Our Lord is gracious and merciful to us. King David in the Old Testament knew also about the grace of God. And he joyfully proclaimed in Psalm 103, as far as the east is from the west, so he, that is the Lord, removed our transgressions from us. And David didn't even know about Jesus' death on the cross yet at that point. He did believe in the coming of the Messiah and that that Messiah would provide the forgiveness, the mercy that he needed. And he joyfully proclaimed that way back in Psalm 103. We know and believe that our Lord's great love continues for us. We know and believe that our Lord has paid the price to forgive our sins. And the power of the Holy Spirit uh, reminds us day after day of God's grace and mercy. And he gives us the power to forgive others, possibly more than seven times, maybe 77. But who's counting? We will soon pray the Lord's Prayer, and we will say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. And so we promise the Lord that we will forgive because we know how he forgives us. May the Holy Spirit gives us, give us the desire and the power to forgive one another, to have the love that our Lord has for us, to have the compassion that Jesus has for us day after day, even when we do sin, uh, sometimes in the same way day after day. And may knowing the unlimited forgiveness of our God toward us move us with the power of the Holy Spirit to have unlimited and genuine from the heart forgiveness for everyone who sins against us. May the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus as you continue to forgive one another knowing his love for us. Amen. Please rise for prayer.